Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jairo, I'm your host here. Today we're talking about another beginner-friendly build, fun, non-standard build, which I loosely labeled as Gyro's two-hander ice crash juggernaut. Okay, so why is it non-standard? Let's get the obvious and let's get all the disclaimers out of the way straight away. It is non-standard because juggernauts generally are built in Path of Exile with a one-hander and a shield. They're tanks, they're really tanks. In this particular case, admittedly, I was aiming for a different build when I was trying to build this, build this character, but sort of early in the, into the game, I kind of made a decision that the survivability for me took uh, precedence. Playstyle is fun, is a lot of fun. And as I said, I started building this um, kind of aiming to get to the Ice Crash as the central skill of this build, like something that is built around. Ice Crash, in case you're not familiar with this, it's an area of effect slam of the ground, basically, usually done with a two-hander weapon, and it creates kind of concentric circles around you. The closer the enemy is to you, the more damage they take. Now, Ice Crash is not the skill that you will get um, early on in the game. You will need to level to it. If I'm not mistaken, you get Ice Crash around Sun Encampment, so around Act 3, that will be around the ballpark of uh, level 28 to 30, depending how fast you level, how fast you progress through the storyline. Uh, you will level with Ground Slam. Ground Slam is another very similarly feeling ability, so the gameplay will be very similar, so it will be familiar to you by the time you get Ice Crash. And also you will take Leap Slam um, ability, you will take the Jump, the Hop ability as soon as it's available to you. But generally that's your playstyle. It's quite awesome, it's really really satisfying. Primary kind of piece of gear that I was leveling with was Tabula Rasa. It's not right now here on me. Tabula Rasa is a simple robe that doesn't have any stats on it. It just has six linked sockets. I'm using currently this Cataclysm Wrap Gladiator Plate. Why? Because, as I will show to you in Ascendancy section very, very shortly, um, the Ascendancy class of Juggernaut, it, one, of the, one of the passive skills, one of the talents that you get is doubling your armor that you receive from your body armor. So if this is my body armor, and it currently already has 55% increased armor, it's just a very lucky roll in this sense, and I have the armor of 1144, then my Juggernaut Ascendancy is going to double that, which results in a fairly, fairly massive increase to my physical damage reduction. Ice Crash is supported by multi-strike support. We want to hit a couple of times. That increases the vis visceral kind of effect of this, and it makes, it makes the gameplay so much more enjoyable and more effective in terms of producing the amount of damage. Then we have 45 support. Fortify support. Fortify support is also not something you pick up early on, but this is what you need to look out for to try and get it. It's absolutely essential. It's absolutely essential, as this says, as soon as you hit something, it creates this little little star-like aura around you, and that means that you take a lot less damage, 20% 20, 20 if I'm not mistaken. And the final one here that I prioritized over the other gems that didn't fit in, like I'm waiting for a better armor, obviously, for six uh, sockets here, elemental damage with attacks. We do cold damage, quite a lot of cold damage. So this is a mix damage build, which is why I would not, I did not, I said it beginner friendly, but I did not say that it's the easiest one. It's not the easiest build, no chance. You have to plan kind of things here quite well. You have to, to have trade-offs on skills, have to tr have trade-offs on how you build this. But supported skills deal 50% more elemental damage. That's a massive increase to elemental damage and Ice Crash does cold damage, yes? All right, excellent. What else do I have? Leap Slam, second very important thing. That's your mobility, my friend. Jump into the air, damaging and knocking back enemies. No cooldown. Fantastic. It's just beautiful. Uh, I supported by shockwave support, shockwave support on me melee hit, if you leap and then you hit something in melee, there is also a shockwave, why not, why not take it, right? And then there is a life tap support, now this is questionable, but I like it, as a character that's not built around boosting your mana, you kind of, especially early in the game, you kind of won't have that much mana, you will find yourself using mana flasks almost more often than your life flasks. So I wanted to offset that. I want to continue leaping and moving ahead as fast as I could without depleting my mana and saving mana for my attack naturally, right? 
That's why I used life tap support. It's, a, it's, it's what it says. It is using life instead of mana on your skill. But to be honest with you, it does not. I never felt that me using this has somehow hindered me or made me worried about my health ever. So it, it doesn't take that much health for you to be mobile, to remain mobile, but at the same time kind of have heaps of mana, heaps of mana left to use it on the damaging, on the damaging ability. Yeah. Herald device is an optional, as you can see, not optimized gear here, not optimized supports and everything. Um, Herald device is an optional buff. Reservation of money is 25%. I did not level with it. It's something that I use now in the end game when things leveled out a little bit and I actually feel like I can spare 25% mana to be reserved for this to basically add quite a bit of cold damage to my attacks and also my damage cannot be reflected, which is fantastic in this particular case. What else do I have? Flesh and Stone. Flesh and Stone is probably one aura that I use in all of my melee builds. It's a pretty significant reservation of mana of 35%. That's quite a lot of mana reserved, considering that I don't have much of it already. Look, it is two stances. It's offering you two stances. One stance is the sand stance that increases the size of AoE, which is good to clear trash, soft trash. But at the same time, at the same, and you take less damage, obviously, from far, from attacks that are coming from far away. But Blood Stance is something that maims enemies around you and increases your damage quite substantially as well. So I found myself actually towards the end game, towards the second half of the game, I and once I started investing into the Juggernaut Ascendancy, like getting other damage reduction uh, elements, I found myself using this a lot more often blood stance to do more damage simply to do more damage yes steel skin steel skin is, is a god skill so to speak this build will be relying on the god skill quite heavily you are going to be using skill steel skin quite often it's a short duration but it's a pr pretty substantial buff to your survivability you will be relying quite a bit on the ancestral protector totem ancestral protector totem is actually quite essential for this build funnily enough you will be, as it says, you will be summoning this Ancestral Totem, which will contribute a little bit to me melee attacks, so, and it will give you quite a lot, quite a, almost 20%, right? 18% at this stage. Quite a lot more attack speed when the Totem is, is active. This is a massive contribution to your DPS, so do not discard this. You really, really need to use that Totem Protector. I've used also multiple Totems support on this Totem, so you can summon multiple totems and I think, again, I'm not a pro, okay, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below, but I do believe that even though the supported skills, so the totem does less damage per se, it doesn't smack them as hard, but I do think that they increase, they contribute, double totems contribute to extra speed of your attack. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that double totem does that. That's the only reason I'm using it. As far as the other gear elements are concerned. Tabula Rasa just made it easier for me to level because I could also, in addition to these four, Ice Crash, Multi-Strike Support, Fortified Support and Elemental Damage, I could also plug in Chance to Bleed and Faster Attacks. Faster Attacks was a massive loss for me, massive loss of, of damage because Faster Attacks, you want to you wanna hit as fast as you can, needless to say, right? And this level to uh, gem level to level 16, in my case, not the top level of the gem. Supported skills have 40% increased attack speed. Do I need to say more? For a melee character that is kind of, well, a juggernaut, yeah? It's not known for the faster dexterity build uh, based attacks. This is really, really, really important for you to weave it into your build. You will continuously buy uh, or find um, maces that are normal quality and you will continuously upgrade them using things like orbs of alchemy or some other some other um, uh, orbs that are allowing you to upgrade with some guaranteed property you will be continuously upgrading to see if it rolls randomly with a substantial substantial increase to physical damage or to your elemental damage in this particular case it is a substantial 135 percent increased physical damage you can see the physical damage range there yes it's a fairly stretched build as you can see probably one of the more stretched builds builds for me but it works okay so you will start obviously as a marauder you will start here in the middle and you will go first you will go left you will go left here along these lines to warrior's blood as the main node in this particular case then you will go up 
and you will take heart, of, take heart of the Warrior, and I also recommend that you take Born to Fight. You could choose to also continue here to Butchery, because Butchery will be probably your easiest and closest, uh, closest accessible initial boost to your physical damage with two-handed two melee, melee weapons. And we are building this as an odd two-handed melee weapon um, character build. Then if we will come back to this and we'll probably go left. We will go to Diamond Skin to increase armor and elemental resistances to give us a little bit of extra boost. Then we will, we will take these bottom things here, the kinetic impacts. Again, we are looking for increases to physical damage with two-handed melee weapons. I am weapon agnostic. I can use any weapon I want. Staves, two-handed maces, you know, um, scepters. Which is why I've taken things like execution. I've taken things like wrecking ball. Um, I am, if you will pay attention, I am kind of headed towards this bunch of nodes over here because I'm sort of after reaching end game and after deciding that that's how I play, I'm cool with it. My intent is that I am probably going to wrap this build up and the POB will reflect this POB link with specializing in maces or scepters. This is a very interesting cluster of the nodes here. Um, because we will be relying very heavily on Fortify to keep you alive to, on that little aura that pops up when you start hitting enemies, I highly recommend that you take these, these nodes. They basically increase the positive effect of Fortify for you, for your survivability, for your everything. Ascendancy, if you're a beginner and this is the very first, first build that you are watching from me, Ascendancy is a labyrinth, so as you progress through the campaign in the Path of Exile, you finish Ascendancy Labyrinth and you finish it several times. You unlock certain areas in the world, you kind of tick the boxes before the labyrinth gets open to you. And you do the labyrinth first time at level 33, then you do it at level 55, and then there are a few times you can do it after, but I've never bothered because I switch on to other builds, that's more fun for me. But people who are really pushing endgame, and that's not me, they do it, obviously they fill out all of these talents inside of, inside of whatever the specialization, whatever the class they've chosen. Nobody says that juggernauts have to have a shield. There are lots of talents that support it, but you don't have to, okay? Hence, I recommend that at your first pass through the labyrinth, Ascendancy Labyrinth, at level 33, you take armor and life regeneration because it's more straightforward and then i took unbreakable because that's flat out regeneration of life reduced damage taken armor received from body armor is doubled which is protecting you physically a lot more and total uh, amount of physical damage prevented from hits heals back as life fantastic it's a fantastic addition to your survivability and then at level 55 when you go second time into the labyrinth that's when you go here you increase armor you increase increase endurance charge duration and then you um, gain unflinching, which gives you extra endurance charges that reduce the amount of damage you take, and so on and so forth. Further on, I would say you can't go wrong when you continue reducing your physical damage taken. See, none of this, none of this talks about a shield. You don't need a shield as a, as a juggernaut. You can just be really, really tough juggernaut with a two-hander, all right? The biggest pro of this build is how visceral, powerful you feel when you play it. It's a really, really fun gameplay. Leaping around and crashing everything and everything just, you know, either stunned, a lot of stuns are happening, so, and, and a lot of my talents are also boosting the damage when you get stunned, when you stun the enemy. So that creates quite a bit of passive defense because you are slowing them down, you are freezing them, you are chilling them with your cold attacks, you're stunning them as you leap into them and stuff like that. It's, it really, really feels fantastic, and I think it's quite efficient. On bosses, this build is solid. Yes, you take damage, yes, you need to rely on Steel Skin, you need to rely on Enduring Cry, um, and if I haven't mentioned Enduring Cry as a, as a talent, as a, uh, one of the skills, please consider that Enduring Cry has to be there. You will see in the POB, in the Cluster Jewels, I will mention it anyway for you there, so no harm done. Um, but it is it is relatively survivable compared to other compared to other classes compared to other characters in Path of Exile that I've rolled. So I, I'd say it performs okay on bosses. Damage, like we go to the cons, damage is slightly on the low side when it's single target. When it's AoE, I think damage is decent. 
when it's single target when you're on bosses yes it's more survivable than my other builds but i'd say damage you sense how much it drops you'll survive you'll you'll survive especially if you move around smartly and stuff like this but you'll be killing bosses like kitava forever for ages it will take you ages and things like that but you'll certainly be dying a lot less you will be dying as People die in Path of Exile, okay? Characters die. That's it, that it is what it is. I'm not saying that this is hardcore friendly build. It's not, okay? But at the same time, you'll die a lot less than some Witch will or than my Ranger will or some, some other kind of really flimsy skinny classes. This is not a skinny dude. But this is all I probably wanted to say to you about this non-standard but quite fun, I think it's quite awesome, two-hander juggernaut uh, based around Ice Crash as a skill. Let me know if you enjoyed this, let me know if you're gonna try this. If I had to play a melee character right now and if I wanted to invest more time into one of them rather than pursue some other builds, which I normally do, then if I had to choose between my currently ready this guy, the Ice Crash Juggernaut and my uh, Cyclone Duelist, I would go for this guy. That's as far as, if, if that's a measure of where is more fun for me and where is more satisfaction i think this build is a lot more pleasant for me to play let me know how you feel if you're not subscribed yet please feel welcome in this unpretentious casual club of poe players and once again all disclaimers were set out of the way i never pretend to be an expert and i invite more people to join me in this beginner friendly adventures in path of exile please subscribe if you haven't already like the video if you don't mind it takes me a lot longer than one second for you to click the like button it takes me a lot longer to create these videos for you and it's much appreciated see you later thank you very much talk to you soon bye bye